Hello and welcome to Hygromatic. My name is Gebhard Markgraf. We are in the presentation room here at Hygromatic. And today I would like to show you the fast and easy maintenance of an electrode steam generator from our compact line series. Before I begin with the actual maintenance of the unit, I need to make sure that the cylinder is devoid of water. To do that, I press the main switch here in position 2 and hold it. The water is now running out. So, you can tell by the sound of the pump that all the water has drained out. Next, I will make sure the power supply is disconnected and confirm that I have protected it against an unintentional restart. After that, I can unfasten the three screws and detach the cover. Although we had disconnected the power supply earlier, I will check again anyway that no voltage is in fact applied to the unit. That means I will take measurements again at all points of the main contactor. There is no voltage applied. So I can be reassured and work in the left area. Before I handle the steam cylinder, I check and see if it is still hot from prior use, which is now not the case. It is cool to the touch. I can handle it well. And then I begin to disassemble it. In order to disassemble, I first loosen the clip on top near the steam hose adapter. I can pull it out and place it right on top and ready. And then I can subsequently pull the steam hose up and out together with the steam hose adapter. This is done relatively easy. And now I can use the clip again and push the clip onto the adapter on top and then have my hands free in proceeding. In the next step, I can now lift the steam cylinder out of the base, keep it in my hands, and can disconnect the electrodes on top here. After we have now disassembled the cylinder, it has to be opened in order to gain access to the electrodes. To open, we can take a screwdriver, a slotted screwdriver, a bit larger one, and lever off the flange clamps. They can be taken off relatively easy. Important while doing so, always keep a finger on them because these clips do tend to jump when they are loosened. Well, now I can open the cylinder in the middle. Well, you can see a little water does still come out. Here we have some light mineral deposits on the electrodes. Here some deposits in the lower part. If you can see a relatively large amount of mineral deposits from the outside, it would be a good moment to say, let's take a look. Well, disassembly of the electrodes is relatively simple. We've got our knurled nuts all differently colored. This is currently a small steam cylinder with three electrodes. With the larger steam cylinders from which we want to get more steam output, we would have six electrodes. The larger ones would have two black, two red and two gray electrodes. Well, this knurled nut can be loosened simply by manual force. Then press out to the front and uh, you can see that there is another one, which is the sensor electrode, which is just a small metal pin that can determine the maximum level of water in the cylinder. This electrode does not wear down and does not need to be replaced, but you should disassemble it and include it in the cleaning. When handling these electrode humidifiers, please don't use cleaning agents because the principle of these electrode humidifiers is to send an electric current through the water and it would be disruptive if we had any chemicals in the water because with them the generation of such a current would be severely disrupted. Well, to clean the electrodes, I would now use a putty knife, a knife rather, and really just simply scratch down upon the surface. We currently have here a kind of lime scale formation. This I can get rid of quite easily with my fingers. It is, however, in its present degree of development, not at all bothersome. I would really like to mention a certain point, and that is to please also perform the cleaning at the top of and inside the cylinder, because there too, minerals as well as salts can deposit, and then sometimes up top here, certain connections with the sensor electrode could be generated, which could at some point possibly produce interfering signals. 
Also, here as well, in the inside, around the base of the electrodes, clean very well, that would be important. The other criteria for maintenance would be the length of the electrodes. We always say when the length of the electrode has reached just one third of the original length, then please replace. I have here for comparison the original electrodes, which are also included in the maintenance set. You can see there is actually not any electrode where present, and in view of this fact, I've decided I will simply clean the electrode and then reassemble them. To clean, I will now take the putty knife and simply scrape off the deposits. Now this here works quite easily, it could be a bit more difficult to do at times, in such a way you would have to go at it a bit harder, which is not a problem, the electrodes can withstand it. The standard material of the electrodes is stainless steel. Should you on occasion observe that the electrode wear is way too high, then it could be that a certain water parameter, the concentration of chloride in your water, might be too high. We generally recommend switching, if the concentration of chloride is above 50 mg per liter, to galvanized electrodes. And in fact, these electrodes have a zinc-coated surface, and the electrode is thereby considerably more resistant to chloride. Well, now we can reassemble the electrodes. To do so, I take the top part of the steam cylinder. I have already attached the sensor electrode. And now we can assemble electrode by electrode. Please make sure while assembling that the electrode surfaces are aligned parallel to each other and create a kind of star shape. Please do not align them in a circular shape. That would cause problems later. Well, I have inserted them all. It then looks like this. The electrodes themselves have a washer up front here. Inside this washer is an O-ring, and the moment I fasten the electrode with the knurled nut, this O-ring secures itself here to the top part of the steam cylinder, and we have achieved a type seal. Good. Now simply screw on the knurled nuts or hand nuts, and please take the term hand nut literally. We have defined them so, in order for them to be tightened solely with manually applied force. Please do not use any tools, otherwise you would generate too much force. That would not be good. When using a unit with three electrodes, it is quite optional where the colors go. When using a cylinder with six electrodes, please take care to place same colors, that is, same phases, on opposite sides of each other. Well, I have now fixed the last knurled nut here. Then I will just go on to the bottom part of the cylinder, and I would like you to strongly note, when you go about handling the steam cylinder, please always have an O-ring set at hand. In this O-ring set you will find one large O-ring for this here cylinder flange, and this is the one I'm going to replace shortly. Plus we have another O-ring for the top, for the steam hose adapter on top to connect there, plus another one here for the lower part of the cylinder to connect that to the base. Well, I can get the O-ring out of the cylinder flange quite easily. I just take a slotted screwdriver again, pick underneath it, and there it is in my hand, and you can feel it. It already is kind of misshaped, and it would be difficult to return this O-ring back to its prior position. And uh, before I just insert the O-ring, I need to make sure that the flange area, the groove, where the O-ring is seated, is absolutely deposit-free, so small grains of buildup somewhere don't interfere with the seal later. Now, the new O-ring is inserted there. And I can reconnect the top and bottom sections. When you are placing the two parts together, please make sure the joints and reinforcements are aligned here and there, then they are in the proper position and fit together snugly. I'm going to secure the position with the first clamp, I'll press it on here, and then take the direct opposite side and apply the next clamp. I can then conveniently place the whole cylinder onto the table and apply clamp after clamp. Before I place the steam cylinder back into the unit, I check the base for any limescale deposits. I remove the deposits. I especially check this area where the O-ring is later seated. 
Same applies to the steam hose adapter on top. It must be clean and free of mineral deposits. And besides that, I can check if all the hoses are positioned properly, are tightly sealed, and then I take another look at all the cables to see if any of them are cracked or otherwise flawed, and none are squashed. If that's okay so far, I insert new O-rings, one O-ring down in the base, and another new one goes up on top in the steam hose adapter. I place it up in the groove. And then I can actually hook the steam cylinder back up to the power supply. That is on top. The electrode connection plugs are attached. And then here the small sensor electrode. And then I place the cylinder into the base. Now, please take care so none of the cables are squashed when the steam hose adapter is reattached. Like so, with some pressure. And then secure the whole thing with the clip. After I have now reconnected the power supply, I restart the unit and let it run for 5 to 10 minutes. I check during this time if everything is sealed properly, if the hoses, the seals are not emitting any water so far, and leave the unit running. All of that is in order. I close the unit in completion with the cover, pull the screws tight, and the unit can run again.